Robert F. Kennedy, RFK, running for president of the United States, RFK Jr., because obviously the father, it all ended in California, in a kitchen, I might add. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but it's very conspiratorial that you would murder presidential candidate in the kitchen. But still, I'm sure that provoked your interest a little bit there. Sirhan, Sirhan. Oh, that's who they say did it. Okay. And then uh, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Lousy shot. We don't know. So when I see RFK Jr. running for president now, he is kind of like a magic bullet, isn't he? Entering the race. You know what I mean? Do you remember the magic bullet? I love the magic bullet. Magic bullet was the very first theory from the president, from a, the Warren Commission, everybody. Magic bullet, magic bullet. What's the magic bullet? Bob knows. Bob's a, a big time mathematician, physicist. He knows all this. This guy's a genius. He knows magic bullet. You know, you know what? You know what the magic You got it, baby. <laughs> Um, the magic bullet goes just like my digestive system. <laughs> down to the left, down again, into the guy's wrist and knee. So if you watch RFK Jr. and his magnificent <coughs> campaign, first he's anti-vax, then he's anti-science, now he's anti-gravity. What's left? Anti-Semitic? <laughs> <laughs> you see how that works? That's 20 bucks for me, right? I, get, I, pay, I pay this guy 20 bucks for that, man. Now we know what to show you. Uh, I gotta get a drink after that. Let me, uh, let me check how much more I have on me, because I would like a lot more of those from you. Yeah, make that happen. All right, so, um, yeah. Oh, sure. Um, this social media, which I, I even that, doesn't that word suck now? That word has a little bit of an aftertaste, doesn't it? Social media, or go on my social, on my social. What is that? It's, it sounds very scotch tapey, right? It sounds very synthetic. I don't feel anything in there but emptiness. That's the one I love. I love to look and see other people having a wonderful time, living a great life, then sit back on my couch and check the scores on ESPN. Yeah. Yeah. Who did the Knicks draft? It's a little. Uh, so I came up with something. Maybe you guys will enjoy. I don't, anybody know what I'm talking about? You get that feeling of watching social media and go, oh my God, look at them. And then what am I doing over here? You know, making macaroni right on, on the stove. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got TCM lined up for two nights in a row now. It's a Marlon Brando festival. And I got no sauce in that. I got no ragu. I got nothing. I got macaroni in a pot, boiling with salt, and I'm looking over at Robert Osborne. He's fucking dead for a couple of years. Oh yeah, now he passed the guy with the white hair on TCM. Gone. Out of it. Now it's the Ben guy with the he's got he's got different hair. Now we have a brown, pointy hair guy. But so that, that's what I'm doing. I'm making macaroni, watching TCM. And what's happening on Instagram and TikTok? A supermodel is spinning off a glacier, landing on a Norse ship, sailing into a bonfire. And I'm like, can you get that on Expedia? Expedia, Expedia has stuff like that, right? You can get the experience that you want. Because that's what I want. I want experience. I like tactile interchanges with people. You know, after COVID, I'll take a good uh, um, saliva spittle. If, I, if I'm close enough to someone to see the spittle come out, you ever watch that? Somebody standing in a line, they go, yeah, no, we love going skiing. It's my special place. They get the big pee. It's a plume. It's a plume of phlegm. <laughs> right? It's a beautiful, but because it's uninterrupted, undisturbed, it's a beautiful fall as it tackles all the bacteria below. That's a... Uh, it's kind of poetic, isn't it? Yeah, I got it. Dr. Fauci wrote that to me. <laughs> it's, it's got nothing to do now, that guy. Uh, 
I like the trains. You guys like to ride the train? Love the train. Yeah, love it. Well, I have no responsibility with the train. Nothing. I don't have to know anything. Get in the car from the minute you touch the freaking key. I hate the car. Bob loves to drive. Bob and I did comedy some years ago. I'll drive. I'll drive. Yeah. Thank you. Because we had a Mustang, which I like standing next to. I like, I like a good Mustang. Just stand next to it. I remember. But Bob Bell behind the wheel, and I'm in the passenger seat, eating, loosening my belt, nodding off silently and absolutely with no fragrance, maybe passing a little gas, maybe belching next to him. We're all buddies. But uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, not a fan of the car, but I love the train. I love to walk on to a vehicle that knows exactly what's going on. I don't have to know anything about its operation. I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna be told to give the train an oil change, right? I don't need a tune-up on the train. And by the way, there's not even a dude anymore, or a person. It's a gay day, Edward. It's a gay day, Edward. Person. Fucking, fucking oppressive, heterosexual piece of shit. Fucking asshole. Uh, <laughs> capitalist. Fuck working for the mainstream media, making the world a fucking toilet bowl. I can walk around saying, oh, the world's a toilet bowl. You made it that way. With your mainstream heterosexual fucking arrogance. Everybody cares about the women that you're with. What about the women that didn't want to go near you? Why? Because they wear talcum powder and it was no threat to the vagina. They wear the talcum powder on their neck and it smells great. My cousin. My cousin Dolores had a female escort to every fucking family thing we did. And I love the talcum powder. She had that short little haircut where you could see the cowlick in the back and a little extra talcum powder right on the tip. Love that. Yeah. So, uh, no, but listen, my, but Bob's laughing because he knows Ed knows it. Ed knows his whole generation's a piece of shit. No, it's true. We, 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 I know it because I was there. We were sitting around. I'm in college, St. John's in Queens. I'm in, in college. Well, I, you know, we're going to some Al Stewart fucking concert in the year of the cat. You know, this, this guy. And uh, it was all about, but we're going to make the world better. No, these fucking assholes. LBJ, that fucking murdering piece of shit. Fuck him. You know, wait till we get up there. Hey, what did we do? We got up there. Not a thing. Nobody I went to school with even knew where Vietnam was. And I remember the, what was it, Cambodia was worse. Oh, my God. You see the movie with the skulls? Yeah, okay. Try bringing that to my law school classroom. When I, when I would walk into law school, like, I, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Al, Al Pacino, right here, justice for all. This court is out of order. That's who I was going to be. I was going to be that guy. Right, Bob Bell. Bob, Bob would be right now. Get the military industrial complex, Ed. Go get him. Remember what Eisenhower said, Ed? Go get him. And I thought I would. I thought, well, that would be easy. You know, I always thought everything was easy. Oh, yeah, and I'll just go to law school. Then I'll get elected to Congress. Then I'll go in there and I'll tell everybody what to do. And after I get, uh, get them all straightened out, then maybe I'll... Uh, you know, look for uh, some kind of gig in the NBA because I love basketball. <laughs> it's obvious I'm not playing, right? Wouldn't I be a great coach for a bunch of seven foot two guys on the side and I'm screaming in front of them, telling them what to do to get baskets? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the Italian in me. Mike Fratello, one of the great, uh, and he was coach here in New York for a while. Uh, speaking of, oh, I just got back from Italy. Anybody ever been to uh, Europe? I said, you gotta lower this joint. Wow, they are getting away with fucking murder. Okay, so I'm 90 miles south of Rome. And I got a verduta and a, you know, a fruta a store next to me. And I go in, I get spinach, lemons, and oranges for Edward Till. That's my immune system right there. Iron, a lot of vitamin C, and a lot of, I have a lot of free radicals, so I need a lot of antioxidants to jam it down. So I go in and I say to the guy, hey, uh, I want a bag of oranges, bag of lemons, and give me, he didn't have the bags we have. He just had like a take it home bag for the spinach. So I said, fill that thing with spinach, man. I haven't had any spinach in a few days. I eat spinach every day of my life, oranges, lemons, that's my thing. So he fills it up. Now I've got like these three huge bags 
as I'm coming out of the Verduta store, and I say, how much is that going to be? He goes, that's three euros. Three dollars. I mean, three dollars and ten cents, whatever. For all that food. So I was like, uh, where's the consulate? <laughs> I need to find out about this uh, dual citizenship immediately. Oh, yeah. Incredible. And uh, the food, uh, where I'm talking about, 90 miles south of Rome, it's the agriculture belt of Italy. So there's no factories allowed. There's no smokestacks. There's no pollution. The only pollution is like animals going on the side of the mountain, taking a big balagaga, and then the wind would come. And you go, oh my God, is that you? Is Joe Biden around? What happened? Oh, but, uh, <laughs> I had to do it right. <laughs> you know the uncles of mine shit their pants at family oh, gatherings? Yeah. Come on. Uncle Bill. Oh, sorry. I'm very sorry. Excuse me there. Excuse me there, Edward. Uh, I gotta get to the bathroom. <laughs> Out of my way there, Edward. That's okay, Uncle Bill. Go right in. Yeah. Mom, give Uncle Bill the, <laughs> the, the Clorox. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. It was incredible being there. Um, even, uh, here's the thing, like in America, if you bring up cows or steak, right away you're in trouble. What kind of fucking oppressive, meat-eating piece of shit are you? What did you do to the Native Americans, you fuck? We were, we, why aren't you worshiping that fucking cow? There's that crowd. Now you go to Italy, and you see Billy the fucking cow. He's just walking on the side of the mountain. And uh, I go, wow, look at the guy. He goes, yeah, no, he's, uh, he's crazy. I go, they, they're out all day, all day on the side of the mountain, and they know you're going to eat them, and they're not upset about it. <laughs> right? Cal's like, no, what are, you, what are you talking about? That's what I do. I feed people like you. How do you feel? Fantastic. How's your cholesterol? You've been eating all this fucking beef. Uh, fantastic. I have no cholesterol problem. That's me. Keep eating. Shut up and kill me. Let's go. Slaughter my ass. <laughs> Matt and I are going to play a club in Florida that we played before. And the club guy is on the phone with me the other day. He might take an exception to the last uh, attempted humor. Listen, I don't want, uh, I don't mind the sex stuff. If you're going to do the sex stuff, that's okay. Uh, I don't go for the blood and gore. I go, what, what blood and gore in a comedy? Well, yeah, your friend over there uh, did a bit of uh, fisting somebody with a stump. I said, I'm sorry, because hey, uh, your friend came over and uh, talked about having a stump. His hand was cut off, and he still fisted a woman, and she was having her period, and it became very uh, uncomfortable. I said, wow, that's a brilliant bit. I said, you know, if I tweak that, I said, I think I can make you like it. I said, that's got a lot of appeal to me. So, no, I don't do any... Uh, the only blood involved in my life, honestly, I, I'm uh, really going to jinx myself, but I'm 68, okay? 68 years old. All right. Thank you. Satan, can you zoom in? This would be a, a really good specimen to take downstairs. Uh, I have not had a stitch or a broken bone or anything removed, or anything fail. Well, except my brain obviously is failing right now, we can hear that, but you know what I mean? Yeah, not bad. So any minute, it should be cataclysmic. <laughs> it should all catch up with me at once, and then Satan will uh, just hit the button. <laughs> mm. I am uh, single. I bet that's no surprise. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I was not it. A show of hands, who, who believes I've ever lived with women at all? Like, you, you can believe that. Okay, good. Right. So, so it made the threshold. Okay. But now, I, now it's going to get bad because when I'm young, I would always go to the family. Oh, Edward, are you coming for Christmas? Are you bringing your new girlfriend? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, no, this could be the one, Aunt Addie. This could be, I think we're moving in together. Oh, Edward. Oh, Ed. So right away, she'd have to go to Mass. On Sunday, no offense, Satan, but she would go to mass. <laughs> say, say her a little a prayer that I was not going to go to hell because I was going to cohabit now. But they would go from that fear of me cohabiting and sinning, which, you know, it's there's so little sex in my life. If this is the sin, I'm going to be golden when I get up there. From what I've seen other people do. You're not going to have a long list, but all right. So they don't want me to have the sin of just having carnal activities all over with 
with some woman that I'm not married to. But then, in about three years, so Edward, what happened to that girl? Uh, we were all hoping. And we've been through that nine times. <laughs> we've had nine. Bring it to the family, learn the name, move into the apartment. Somehow something always goes wrong. I don't, I don't know what that is, but you'll, you'll judge the first one for me. 1984, 28 years old. I am a sperm machine. I'm going to have seven <laughs> fucking kids. I'm finding a blonde. We're moving to the fucking suburbs. This is the fucking shit. Watch me. Watch me, I'm saying. I find a cute blonde. She's a nurse. Lives in my building. Little upstairs, downstairs, late night. Uh, what would it, what, a triage. A little late night triage. You, you can make it happen. And... Um, Bring her, this shows you my good faith, which I've got nothing for. <laughs> but here's my good faith. I brought this girl to my 10th high school reunion. Hello, real close friends, high school, right? Smoked your first joint, snow snuck into the movie theater to get, you know, those guys. That's who you're bonding with. And I have a job. I'm on the radio, I got my name on a billboard. I can afford the clothes I have on. I'm going somewhere 10 years after high school, I think. So I bring in Miss Beautiful, right. I bring in Miss Beautiful, and I'm like, you know, my friends are like, so this is Lynn, my friends are like, wow, you fucking did great, wow, she's fucking hot. They're all the same, it's all over. And she's going like, eh, eh. Why are you friends? So I said, this is the way they talk, they like you. That's, it's, I don't know, they're staying on the, so half an hour in, she says, you know, I'm not really having a good time. I said, you're not having a good time? You look fucking great. I said, everybody in this room looks know how I'm having sex with you. Could you stand in the light? Let them see you. I want this to sink in on people. He is doing, the, yeah, come on, Ed Till makes good. By the third complaint, I said, so I said, would you like to leave early, maybe? You'd like to get out of here? Oh, that would be great. I'll get our coats. I go, no, get your coat. You're taking a cab. <laughs> Put her in a cab. Send her home to my mother. I, I call my mom in the paper. I go, look, Lynn's not having a good time. I said, but all my friends are enjoying that I'm banging somebody as gorgeous tonight. <laughs> so just keep it going until I get home. I'll be home in a couple hours. And um, I got back to the house, saw Lynn. She goes, how are your friends? I said, well, they're going to miss you. She goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I think we're going to have to break up. I don't think this engagement is good. And I, I, so did I do the right thing? Yes or no? Yes. Sure. Huh? Any uh, yeah. approval? Right, yeah. Oh, thank you. That's what, just soliciting uh, approval. Oh, look who's here. Did I promise that the three beautiful <laughs> smilers said they were going to come to the show? Give it up for these yeah. beautiful girls. Come on. <laughs> All right, now let me start my time again. No, no, I'm just <laughs> Oh my God, I love you. Are you, you're not, are you in a singing group like ABBA? Do you have a, a thing where you sing together? Yeah, we do. Do you guys, do you, go, do you know what ABBA is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're a cover band. <laughs> so maybe you know what, girls, I'm glad you're in the room. I feel more female support. I've had all this testosterone. I've had one lone woman. Now there's a sisterhood in the room, all right? So now I'm going to open up to you the way I could not open up to them. Is that okay? <laughs> Being a single guy, which is what I was describing to them, I am leery of the dating app. I cannot swipe around the filtered pictures of people. I need a human interaction Presence in front of me. Oh, come right in. You got it. No, go right in. Oh, those are you got it, baby. Look at this. Give it up for the fries. I got the fries. Wow. Right. Woo. Those are, yeah, you're welcome. You know, they uh, look like they have real potato skin on them. Those are real fries. Those are made from potatoes, by the way, kids. In case you never saw that before. <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> I look out for them. They're young. They're beautiful. They're, Someone should, someone should have their best interest in mind. You know I do. So, uh, yes, anyway, a dating app, no good for Eduardo. 
Eduardo cannot do the dating app. Eduardo is uh, the man that you met on the street. Hi, how are you? I have love and joy for the world. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm that person. So refusing dating apps left me to the Winn-Dixie, to the Publix, to the ShopRite supermarket you might know of. I would be in the supermarket saying hello to women until the COVID set in. Now I was forced to watch television much too much, and I started watching a show called Snapped. <laughs> You know, it's a true crime show, Snapped. A woman will have had it with the husband or the boyfriend. She snaps and she shoots him. Or she gets her brother-in-law to shoot him. Or they shove him off a cliff. Or they toss him into a, a, a lion's den at the zoo. But they kill these guys every week on time. Every week. Now, I say to myself, wow, this is fascinating. Most of the murders used to be committed by men. Look at all these badass bitches killing all these pain in the ass guys. <laughs> Maybe I'm on their side a little bit. And then at the end of the show, they give their release date for prison. <laughs> you will see a very attractive Great grooming and hygiene now. I mean, the, the day that they sentence these women, it's not their best day, you know what I mean, ladies? They don't look in their best. They're not glowing and shining. But the day they come out, I'm like Ray Liotta in Goodfellas. I'm just waiting outside the prison. I got the car ready to go. My wallet is fat, and we are going out on the town. Because if there's going to be a woman who's wild with you on the first date, it's a woman who's murdered her husband. <laughs> no boundaries. We're going all the way. She's going to order the clams right, and the oysters and the main course, right? She's going to order it all. We're going to have a feast that night. Why? It's the first time she's been to a restaurant in 13 years. <laughs> All right, giving too many of my secrets away. <laughs> yeah. I don't want everybody doing what I'm doing. But uh, true crime is my favorite new type of television to watch. Do you watch any true crime where sometimes right, it's a famous killing? It's uh, November 22nd, 1963 in Dallas. What were those hobos doing up on the bridge? They show you these guys walking by, and then President Kennedy gets shot. Boom! And right away, there's a hobo who steps on a train. Freeze frame on the hobo. Who is this man? Where did he come from? And he's got nothing to do with the killing, but he looks ominous. So that's why he's in our documentary. <laughs> right? So what do you do? Well, yeah, I'm ominous looking. I go on for a lot of documentary work. When they, when they want somebody who's suspected of doing it, but there's no proof, I'm the guy. Look at me. Right? You know you can't trust me, right? You look at me and think, I'm not, I don't trust this guy. But you also don't know if I've done anything wrong. All right. I'm going political. Do you guys mind? I mean, not supposed to. Girls, are you, are you right? Don't do it. Don't do it. Right? How do you feel about it? Look at this. I can't, I can't do it to those cheekbones. Look at those cheekbones. How could you even say a controversial word in front of these gorgeous faces? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wait till the next show and, and save it for then. No, I'm not going to do it now. So, <laughs> no, I got to do it. You know what, girls? There's a tie in for uh, this whole thing about me being single and dating and whatever. I got to retie all in. I turn on the news and it's terrible, the rage that you see in the Middle East. Am I right? That Just the rage. Whichever face you're looking at, the rage is terrible. And I say to myself, that rage is so familiar. Where have I seen rage like that before? And I have never been to the Middle East and I go, oh, your ex-girlfriend Regina. Right. <laughs> right. The rage in a Palestinian's eye or a, a Jewish civilian's eye, that rage 
is only possible in my life uh, in a romantic breakup. That's, that's the closest to terror I have ever felt. Because we decorated the apartment together. I went along with mauve. Do you know what mauve is? You know what I mean? It's a bad color from the 1980s. It's somewhere between purple and pink, and guys never choose it, but I went along with the moth. <laughs> I was a moth. She made me a moth guy. And when I couldn't take it anymore, I brought up everybody's least favorite phrase, we have to have a talk. I said, we have to have a talk. I said, I cannot breathe any more moth. I can't sense any more moth near me. I have demolved myself from this relationship. And she went and took all the moth off the apartment walls. She depainted it. She took the pictures down. And to this day, I feel a moth deficit deep, deep in my heart. Is that too much for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Should I be that emotionally dependent on a color? Should I? But I am. If I walk through the Nordstrom's fragrance department, and there's anything mauve or smelling of mauve or looking like mauve, it's a little tough for me. I chunk up a little bit because perfume does that to my throat. <laughs> All right. Um, how are we doing on time? Hello. I don't even know. Uh, we're at 447 right now. Four, so, how far into the show are we? How many minutes have I done? Um, like 31. <laughs> I did 31 already? Oh, all right. So, you know what? Let me, um, let me give you a little chunk of something here for fun. And uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about education for the kids. Don't you love education? By the way, school, could you, you guys can be college age. Are you college age? College, anybody over there? No, okay. Did you, I love, anybody like college? I love college. I had a ball college. <laughs> high school, love, I went to Catholic high school. We had a smoking lounge. How lucky we were in 1973. They gave us a room to go get lung cancer. Go ahead. Just huff down on that and blow it in each other's face. Stay in a room in the wintertime with the windows shut and just smoke away, kids. Absolutely. So, uh, I always loved school. I, um, I was a good student. I liked to go to class. I, I was a, they go, oh, you're such a brown noser. I wasn't. I, li I really liked the subjects. I would ask my teacher all kinds of questions that went beyond the schoolwork. I would go all in on stuff. And um, I taught for a couple of years. I uh, had a radio show, and they had a, a radio program at the local college. It was all good. But I have to say, I missed something as both a student and as a teacher. This did not happen, and I don't know how, how I escaped it. But there is a pattern in America now of teachers, high school teachers, hot, Rubenesque, gorgeous, curvaceous, entirely desirable teachers asking male students, what are you doing Friday afternoon? I'll be in the band room with a bottle of scotch. I mean, even in the faculty lounge, I couldn't get a shot into any of these bays. Here's a hot science teacher ready to do an experiment with some high school boys on a Friday afternoon doing shots in the band room. Boom! Boom! And she's dancing and they're doing shots. And before you know it, it's a teacher threesome. <laughs> what is it? If you're the kid, you're like, oh my God, I've been watching television masturbating in the bathroom so my parents won't hear me for three years. Now, as a high school senior, 
I'm going to bang Mrs. McGillicuddy, and it's her idea. <laughs> she came up with the idea. She brought the booze. She went and blocked out the band room. It's Friday. We are going to town. We are not just having sex for the first time. We are having Olympic sex. We are diving. We are high jumping. We are long jumping. We are out of our minds with joy. Didn't I promise joy and laughter in the show? Out of our minds with joy. But then one kid calls the cops. And you go, what is your problem? We have waited our entire adolescence for this to happen. And now you are going to call the police and stop it? Well, my mom, your mom, get this kid and put him in a closet. This is graduation day. <laughs> but <laughs> now, Mr. Till, your analysis is wrong. This is not right at all. Society disapproves of this. They call that a sexual assault. Mrs. McGillicuddy giving you shots, banging you like a snare drum. And she's saying, she's saying go for it, but the police say, the society, the law says that this is a crime. And I say, well, I was born in the Bronx. I know what a crime is. Okay. This is not a crime. A 17 year old going nuts on a 42-year-old that's built for the road. That is, not, that is not a crime. That is what the Hindus call nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you feel the pathos in that story, girls? 